Last week, Israel targeted Iran's nuclear facilities in Natanz and Ishvaha. Iran also claimed that Israel targeted Ferdo, its closely guarded nuclear enrichment plant located about half a kilometer beneath a mountain. The nuclear facilities of Iran have been the focus of Israel's attacks since last week as damage to these uranium enrichment sites would limit the country's ability to produce nuclear weapons. And that, as Netanyahu has stated repeatedly, is Israel's ultimate aim. But what exactly is uranium enrichment? What is the process around it? And why is it important to develop a nuclear weapon? Hello and welcome to The Print. My name is Soumya Pele, and over the next few minutes, I will break down these aspects for you. According to a US-based research and advocacy group, the Institute of Science and International Security, Iran could convert its current stockpile of 60% enriched uranium at the Ferdo fuel enrichment plant into 233 kilograms of weapons-grade uranium in just about three weeks. The Institute's latest assessment said that around 233 kilograms of weapon-grade uranium would be enough to produce nine nuclear weapons, given that 25 kilograms of weapons-grade uranium is required to produce one nuclear weapon. According to the International Atomic Energy Agency, the global nuclear watchdog, Iran is enriching uranium up to 60% purity. It could easily refine uranium further to roughly 90%, which is weapons-grade. This, IAEA said, is a matter of concern because in the past, any country that has enriched uranium to such a level has only done so with the intention of producing nuclear weapons. Now, what is uranium enrichment? Uranium has two prominent naturally occurring isotopes, U-235 and U-238, that is uranium-235 and uranium-238. When uranium is dug out of the ground, the element is 99.27% uranium-238, which consists of 92 protons and 146 neutrons, and only 0.72% uranium-235, which is 92 protons and 143 neutrons. The process of uranium enrichment uses naturally occurring uranium and increasing the proportion of uranium-235 while removing uranium-238, which is present in larger proportions in the element's natural form. To utilize this in nuclear power reactors and for weaponry, the proportions of these naturally occurring isotopes need to be altered. Essentially, uranium-238 needs to be eliminated from uranium-235. This needs to be done because only uranium-235 can support a fission chain reaction. During this process, a single free neutron strikes the nucleus of an atom of radioactive material like uranium or plutonium and sets two or three more neutrons free. When these neutrons split off from the nucleus, energy is released. The newly released neutrons go on to strike other uranium nuclei, splitting them again and releasing more energy and more neutrons. The chain reaction continues. In a nuclear power plant, this reaction is carried out in a controlled manner to produce electricity or for the purpose of nuclear medicine. For nuclear weapons, this chain reaction needs to be carried out in a fraction of a second to cause an explosion. Iran has four primary facilities where its nuclear program is focused. The fuel enrichment plant and the pilot fuel enrichment plant in Natanz, the Ferdo fuel enrichment plant and the uranium conversion facility in Ishfahan. In Natanz, which is also the largest facility in Iran, around 20,000 centrifuges are operational. A centrifuge is a machine that enriches uranium. These machines perform the task of spinning uranium in gas form. The rotors in the middle move at 60,000 to 70,000 rotations per minute, while the outer walls of the centrifuge spin at about 400 to 500 meters per second. 
since uranium-238 is heavier than uranium-235, it moves towards the walls of the centrifuge, while the lighter uranium-235 gets accumulated in the middle. The process is repeated several times over to allow the percentage of uranium-235 collected to build up. The more the element runs through the centrifuge, the more enriched it becomes. This works a lot like a salad spinner, if you will, where the water gets thrown to the walls of the device and the salad ingredients stay in the center. Another question that might arise while understanding the process of uranium enrichment is how enriched uranium needs to be for it to be used for developing nuclear weapons. And the answer for this is that for civilian use, for power or medicine, Low enrichment uranium, that is anything in the range of about 2 to 3 percent, is enough. But for explosives, highly enriched uranium is required. For advanced nuclear weapons, more enriched uranium is required. Like I mentioned earlier, countries that currently have nuclear weapons use 90 percent enriched weapons grade uranium. Iran currently has enriched 60 percent. The primary difference between 60% and 90% enriched uranium is the purity of uranium-235. So it is easier for nuclear agencies to get from 60% enriched uranium to 90% because of the amount of uranium-238 that needs to be eliminated keeps reducing the more it stays and spins in the centrifuge machine. This is all from me. My name is Soumya Pillai and you were watching The Print.